is a Pokemon that I think um, Juan can use, but he's not forced into using it. Oh, well. But there it is, jump left. <laughs> yeah, it is, a, it is a way for him to redirect some of those ghost type attacks by his opponent's Lunala. So with Rage Powder, he would be able to draw away all the attention from his Necrozma and then fire back with maybe a Moon Guy's Beam of his own. Yep. It is going to be that Donwing's Necrozma, which is going to be a darker foe against the Lunala here for Jeremy. Um, but Juan supporting the Donwing's Necrozma with the Jump Luff and Smeargle coming out for Jeremy for that support. Yeah, I think like both players had a similar idea here. If we can get our Ghost type attacking Pokemon into the right position, then they can do a lot of damage. Uh, but Smirgle, if it also has Follow Me, that would be a way to not only draw away the attention but nullify any ghost type attacks as Smirgle is a normal type. So already in this first game, I feel like, um, well, some mind games going on in this first turn and that could be really, really important because at the same time, both Smirgle and Jumpluff could also go for sleep inducing moves, but nope, we will just see a fake out coming out. A fake out and now a photon geyser from this Necrozma that just Ultra Burst and Smeargle barely hangs on with that Focus Sash. Yep, with that Focus Sash that we've seen so much, it is able to take the attack, but Jeremy's Lunala can now activate the Z Crystal, and we did not see Rage Powder as Jump Luff was prevented from moving by Fake Out, and I feel like, ooh, that's all she wrote for that Ultra Necrozma on Huan's side. Yeah, we might have just seen Ultra Necrozma do the Ultra Burst and a move. And that's it. But actually, oh, wow. it's the Jump Love taking the receiving end of this menacing Moonrise Maelstrom. Okay, it looks like Jeremy really, really does not want to <laughs> get into a position where there is going like uh, sleep powders coming off from the Jump Love. So he is going for the straight knockout on the Jump Love on the first turn with Fake Out breaking a potential Focus Ash. And once again, that Jump Love just doesn't get a move. Uh, the same thing happened the last time we saw it on stream. But um, at the same time, though, it also means that Ultra Necrozma is at least safe for the turn and he well, can stick around for a little while longer. That Moody boost was really important for that Smear Girl, actually. It's uh, got the special defense boost. Um, and, I, and I feel like with some of the Pokemon that Juan has uh, at their disposal, you really kind of want to see that special defense boost. Yeah, it could be helpful maybe uh, if the Smeargle was still healthy, but yeah, true. <laughs> now at 1 HP, uh, <laughs> yeah, probably not going to matter that much as unlike that Amoongus, Smeargle doesn't have a clear way of regenerating its health, but uh, nevertheless, Jeremy deciding that even at 1 HP, uh, Smeargle is worth uh, saving, so he swaps it out into his Kangaskhan and that stuck attacker that just hit the field could now go for that Trick Room play that we were mentioning earlier. Might go for the Trick Room play. Kangaskhan on the receiving end of another Photon Geyser, and that's actually so much damage. About three quarters wow, of the health yeah. gone from a single attack. And a Moon Guys Beam firing off into the Stack Attacka slot. Doesn't do too much here, but Stack Attacka able to get a Gyro Ball into the Lunala, breaking that Shadow Shield. Yeah, fortunately for Jeremy, that Shadow Shield is still in effect, so uh, that Gyro Ball actually didn't do that much damage at all. Um, however, Necrozma on Juan's end did not go for the Protect. Uh, so Jeremy could have targeted that, and that could have been a knockout. But yeah, Juan now still with three Pokemon remaining. And Jeremy has all of his four Pokemon remaining, but a lot of them have taken a ton of damage already. I feel like now would be a good time for Juan to maybe protect his Necrozma, though, because <coughs> Kangaskhan is threatening Fake Out. Mm -hmm. And um, could also threaten Low Kick on that Sakataka, though, if that is what Jeremy carries. So um, yeah, if he can find the right moves here, he could do a lot of damage to Juan's team. Maybe doubling up into the Staka Taka. Also, same, something like a Moon Guys Beam plus Bite combination would do a lot of damage. Because Trick Room is so important for Juan to get up because of how slow that Staka Taka is, Jeremy would benef benefit a lot from being able to remove that Trick Room pressure. But Smeargle coming back in, maybe a read here from Jeremy knowing that we were going to see some sort of damage go into Lunala slot oh. here. But Photon Geyser... No fake out coming out, so wow. Kangaskhan will go right down and Stakataka is free to go for another move. Could go on the offensive, but nope, decides to set up the trick room right now. This so is a, just a, a big swap here too. Jeremy looked like they were in a, 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 you know, a, a, a bit of a, a, an okay position, yeah, but now yeah. Juan really does look like they've taken the driver's seat. Certainly, and we haven't seen Juan's last Pokemon. It's always a little bit of a guessing game. If you see two super fast Pokemon, just like the Necrozma and Jump Bluff, well, you can kind of expect the Primal Ground to be in the back for Juan, so the Trick Room mode is really strong. But it, it also could have been like a mind game, and then all of a sudden, oh, there's a Choice Curve Tapulele coming out, and Juan wants to be on the faster end. 
um, just by being naturally faster. But nope, sets up the Trick Room now, even though his Necrozma is still on the field, a very fast Pokemon. So now Jeremy has the opportunity to go, yep, for something like a Fake Out and Moon Guys Beam to do a lot of damage and utilize the Trick Room for his own favor. <laughs> <laughs> Juan getting a little bit excited here. Um, seeing the Moon Guys beam now come out from Jeremy into this deck attack oh, slot. Wow. That actually does um, a, a, another wow. big chunk here, but Necrozma again <laughs> going Necrozma? for big, big damage. Necrozma just doesn't protect. Also, oh my at the face of a potential, like, uh, follow me or something, it just goes for the Moon Guys beam, a ghost type attack. Uh, oh, Smeargle speed boost usually would be really good, but under the Trick Room circumstances, that's not what you want to see in Jeremy's shoes. And Juan really, really getting ahead in this game. Great play um, on his end. And with this bulky stack attacker, is actually able to withstand multiple of these Moon Guys beams. And yeah, it looks like he's in a strong position to take on this game. Stack attack is surviving not one, but two big attacks in a row. That was really incredible to see. But now a spiky shield here coming out from the smear gold just in case Juan decides to try to go for an attack there. Ooh. The gyro ball does go in, but oh, still stack attack hangs on. And the geomancy coming out from Xerneas. Wow, looks like that is exactly what Jeremy was hoping for. Uh, he knew he was a little bit um, in a bad position, so making a very risky play to try and play himself out of that, utilizing Xerneas' speed advantage compared to that Ultra Necrozma in Trick Room to set up Geomancy. So even if Juan decided to go for a strong attack, um, directed into the Xerneas. Uh, it could be that light that burns this guy, and yup, there it comes. There really it powerful Z-move, but um, it's not in Psychic Terrain, and we have just seen the special defense double for Jeremy's Xerneas. So probably not going to secure the knockout onto the Xerneas with this move, but it is going to put it in a critical range here for its, its hit points. Certainly, and uh, yeah, if Juan decided to do that, then he could also target down the Smurgle because um, the Z-move would hit through the spiky shield and knock it right out. So let's see there. It is going to be into Xerneas and yeah, that'll do a decent chunk of damage. Um, but yeah, as we were saying, not enough to get the knockout there. Let's see though. Trick Room you uh, never know. still in effect. Uh, so <laughs> Xerneas has to stall maybe a little longer. Um, to really use the speed boost that it just got. Talking about speed boosts, um, Smirgle's <laughs> accuracy is back uh, to being boosted and the speed also is still up um, two stages. So if Jeremy somehow was able to maybe get a double protect here with a Smirgle, uh, he could still take the game home. Yeah, you have to get through this trick room though and that's going to be kind of where Jeremy needs to get a little lucky with getting mm -hmm. that second protect. Yep. But, uh, well, we already saw the Z move, so you at uh. least can't go through there. And unfortunately, no spiky shield this time. A protect, though, coming out from the Xerneas, but Juan already celebrating just a little bit, knowing that this Gyro Ball is going to finish off the Smeargle. And not only is it going to Smeargle, uh, to finish off the Smeargle, but, uh, yeah, Stack Attacker, thanks to the Beast Boost, will also yep. get an increase in its defense. Okay, well, that's a little bit of information that Jeremy can use, but seeing us how well the Stack Attacker was able to take Moon Guys Beams earlier in the game, he also kind of could expect the Stack Attacker to be more of a bulky version. A little bit more of a bulky version, it definitely taking away from the speed of the Stack Attacker and training it more into its potential hit points or its defense here. Um, yep. I, I guess particularly the special defense. Yep. So now the very last turn of Trick Room, but also Xerneas, fails to get the double protect. And Juan, I'm not sure if you guys can hear it at home, but the crowd <laughs> is cheering him on as he's able to tie up the series. And we will be moving on to game three. Moving on to a game three, and it all comes down to this. An adjustment needs to be made from Jeremy Rodriguez in order to take the win and move forward as the top four. And what do you think that adjustment has to be? Huh, yeah, uh, his Lunala was really in a good position, uh, basically for the entirety of the match. It could have gone for a Moon Guys Beam, knocking out the Ultra Necrozma of Juan multiple times, but again and again and again, Juan was just um, getting these reads correctly, identifying that, okay, you're not gonna think I'm letting my Ultra Necrozma go down, so instead of going for the mm -hmm. obvious protect, he just went on the offensive, and wow, if we're jumping into team preview, Juan has already selected the Pokemon that he wants to bring. He looks to be so ready for this matchup, and as if he had exactly known what he wanted to do, 
even though he lost the jump love very early on, he, well, it was okay for him. He kind of um, trusted his abilities to read what his opponent was going to do, and that is something that is uh, really incredible if you're playing against a player of Jeremy's caliber. I feel like the jump bluff actually did a lot to distract Jeremy from what the real objective was, which was taking out the Necrozma, because allowing that Necrozma to survive as long as it did meant that it got off some big damage against Jeremy's heavy hitters. Yeah, certainly um, doing a ton of damage to that Xerneas, also to the Kangaskhan and yeah. the Smurga. So yeah, Ultra Necrozma really the key factor besides that stack attacker on Juan's team. And those are the two big threats that I think also Jeremy knows he has to deal with. Um, maybe he wants to bring Incineroar now for this uh, last game as uh, that would be a way for him to kind of drop stack attacker's attack stat to prevent that from doing as much damage, while at the same time, due to the dark typing, it could also stop that Ultra Necrozma from doing a lot of damage. Yeah, it does stop them from doing quite a bit of damage here, but they're going to shake hands. This is going to be that game three here for this top eight match between Jeremy Rodriguez and Juan Salerno. Yeah, let's jump into this, and yeah, it's tough to say. I think Incineroar might make an appearance here for Jeremy. Smurgle was able to do a lot with a fake out of the first turn, but well, Incineroar can do that again, but Juan is already celebrating as if he was uh, <laughs> really expecting this switch up of Pokemon choices. So if we can get in game, let's see what we have here. All right, it's going to be Jeremy Rodriguez leading with Lunala and Crobat versus a Dawnwings Necrozma and the Tapu Lele here from Juan. Well, so he was celebrating seeing that Crobat is coming out, a Poison-type Pokemon, now up against two Psychic-type Pokemon. Maybe not the best matchup that Jeremy was hoping for. However, uh, still an opportunity for Jeremy to set up the Tailwind and enable his Lunala to outspeed both the Ultra Necrozma as well as the Choice Scar of Tapu Lele. So that is something that we could see. Juan could, on the other hand, um, get the knockout on Crobat on this very first turn. He may not be able to prevent the Tailwind from going up, but getting a Pokemon in return is probably a good trade for him to take. Absolutely. Tepo Lele, they're going for a Psychic right away onto the Crobat. Might not be able to oh, get through wow. into a Tailwind turn. Crobat getting a one-hit no knockout focus, here. No Focus Ash, a clean wow. knockout, and the Moon Guys Beam following it oh, up again. Oh, no. Well, it might not be quite enough to get that knockout on Lunala um, due to the Shadow Shield. Uh, still so much damage coming out, and wow, this, yeah, they're not giving each other room to breathe at all. <laughs> really Jeremy, you know, straight firing back with that Z-move. The Z move probably finding its mark <laughs> into the Necrozma yep. because you want to get rid of that big threat that did so much work in that game one. Menacing Moonray's Maelstrom now taking Necrozma into another dimension. Yeah. Really needs to pick up the knockout here. And then throwing it out again and coming back with a surprise attack. Yeah. <laughs> uh, beautiful animation and a big KO for Jeremy. So now he is able to knock out this Ultra Necrozma right away. Um, but at what cost? He took so much damage on his Lunala. He lost the Crobat as well. And, well, uh, uh, now, of course, Juan, um, that also means that now one of his very heavy hitters is not a factor anymore. But, um, yeah, he still has potentially, I would assume, Stack Attacker and the Primal Ground in the back. And those are two Pokemon that um, really enjoy being in this type of situation mm -hmm. because Groudon can take any combination of hits. Tabulele is still. Um, applying the psychic terrain on the field, so no fake outs for Jeremy's Kangaskhan. And Tabulele can also outspeed and potentially knock out Lunala on Jeremy's side as well. So a lot going for Juan here, and Jeremy really has to come up with a plan. Jeremy's going to have to come up with a plan for this one because Groudon making it a sunny day means that all of the battleground is in Juan's favor here. Um, Lunala still kind of sitting on its last legs. Hmm. Yeah, Lunala could maybe go for a Protect to protect itself from being knocked out by Psychic. And then Kangskhan uh, could go for the Double Edge, which would be doing a lot of damage to Tapu Lele and potentially knocking it out in the process. Then Jeremy would have the speed advantage back, even though he did not get to set up the Tailwind. But at the same time, Juan, the way he's played so far, I wouldn't be surprised if he caught a Protect like that, maybe doubling up into the Kangaskhan, taking that Pokemon out, and then Jeremy would only be down to his last two Pokemon. So it's a very, very important turn here. And um, yeah, tournament life on the line for both of them. But oh, 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 oh. I think this might have been a timeout by Jeremy. 
Um, let's see there. No Protect coming out. No Mega Evolution coming out. Oh, it looks like things are falling apart here for Jeremy a oh, little bit. Oh, no. Moon Guys Beam will be coming out. And Kangaskhan was able to take the attack. So Lunala gets the chance to get a knockout on the Tapu Lele. But Does get it. <laughs> what does the Kangaskhan do? Yeah, what, what can the Kangaskhan do in some of these moments here? Is going to go for the double edge into the ground on, which means that some of this recoil damage is enough to knock it out. Wow, knocking out the Kangaskhan and um, Precipice Plates, though, if it does connect, which wow. it does, will knock out Lunala. Once again, the crowd is cheering for Juan and Jeremy, who has played a flawless tournament up until this point, now down to his very, very last Pokemon. And he will be going up against a Primal Groudon and potentially a second Taka. And ooh, it is the Xerneas. That is not a matchup oh, you really want to see Xerneas in. And oh, Juan no. knows it, and Jeremy knows it as well. Well, this is going to be a very long road for the Xerneas. This is going to be a long road, but I, I don't think that Jeremy is really going to go out without a fight here. Juan does have a lot of agency, but it's not over till it's over. Yeah, it's not over if it's over, especially if there's a Xerneas on the board. But at the same time, well, Geomancy is the only really real way um, for it to take on multiple Pokemon at the same time. But Gyro Ball and Fire Punch is a combination that should easily knock out this Xerneas and Juan. Wow, it looks like in this first big tournament in the Masters Division has oh, not only made it into the top eight, but will also advance into the top four, <laughs> beating Jeremy Rodriguez after he has played such an incredible tournament up until this point. But, yep, Fire Punch doing so much wow. damage, and Gyro Ball will finish it off. The players are shaking hands, and Juan Salerno will move on to the top four. And you can really see it 